So now you can use AI to generate user interfaces in React, HTML with Tailwind, and a lot of cool stuff. And it actually allows you to do things like generating this login page in here through different versions. And you can tell exactly what to do to basically generate this Instagram clone in here, like an Instagram up UI clone to more of like a dashboard in here if you want, like a table dashboard in here that is clickable with buttons and different stuff in here. All of this using V0, which is an, an awesome tool made by Vercel that uses AI behind the scenes to generate those user interfaces. So in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and try to look into it. I got the access to private alpha and the private beta to actually go ahead and try it out and give you my impressions and actually see if this is a capable of generating an awesome user interface exactly as you describe it in the prompt and whether or not the generated code will work eventually inside of your React project. So V0 has been blowing up lately on Twitter and different blogs and everyone talking about it. So I finally got access. I got access to like a whitelist to the private beta in here. It was a private alpha uh, a couple, I think a week ago or something. Now it's private beta. And I actually got the chance to go ahead and actually try it and play around with the AI and see how cool it is to be able to tell AI to generate for you React ready-made user interfaces with Tailwind CSS. So as you see in here, there's already a bunch of them already made by the team at Versal, who are like obviously the creator of like V0, Next.js and stuff like that. So for example, if we take this demo in here, like an Instagram app UI. So as you see in here, it only took eight versions to be able to actually to get to this really awesome sort of like Instagram application UI clone where you got a bunch of buttons. And if you go into it, screw the buttons in here, screw like there is an hover effect and everything on the buttons. They look pretty sick, even on the toolbar in here, or more of like the up bar for the camera on top in here, messages and stuff like that. And this is actually version eight. So this is like literally the last version, but of course of how V0 actually works, if you scroll down all the way up until V0, so it's literally like the first prompt that is us. So the first prompt was Instagram app UI and it literally generated something like this. Then you can actually incrementally start putting things together and actually giving it more and more prompts. For example, in here V1, it was uh, like, oh, something went wrong. So we tried with V2, they give it a oh, minimum width of 360 pixels with maximum width of 960 pixels in here. So you're giving it a little more precise sort of like UI properties in here. So you can just give you, uh, you know, width and height, for example, V3 in here, it made it a little more uglier. So replace this with Instagram. And you keep actually prompting it with different stuff and actually telling it to fix some things in here, fix a button, fix the layout, use Flexbox. So use something like technical words here and there. For example, this one, oh, make this solid icon not outlined. So if you see this one on top where you've got this sort of like small mouse cursor, that means they have actually used a feature that allows you to select a specific UI element on the design in here and actually provide a prompt specifically for that UI element. And you can tell it, for example, in here, he's telling it, oh, make this solid icon, not outlined. So he's probably selecting one icon. I'm not sure exactly which icon it is, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean in a second. Now, if we try to check the code, if we go to V8 in here, go to the code segment in here on top. So it generates for you both the React and an HTML in here. And HTML is, of course, using Tailwind. Both of them actually use in Tailwind. So I'm more interested about the React part. So the React in here, it gives you like components and it returns some GSX. Of course, everything in here is generated using AI. So screws in here uses class name for like Tailwind stuff and it gives it like width and height um, for buttons in here inside. And what I really, really like about this one is actually uses SVG. So it kind of like, it gives you a full SVG sort of like icon with everything that you need. It doesn't use any image. It doesn't import the image from outside or from a URL or anything. It literally generates the image, like the SVGs in here. And of course, you're gonna find a lot of stuff in here. So the whole code is gonna be in a single file. Of course, it's not really that clean. Uh, it's not split through components. Of course, this is actually, hopefully we can see another awesome feature that allows you to write a better sort of components and actually split them up. But for now, it does exactly what you actually supposed to do, right? projects very, very easily. So let's go ahead and try to generate something cool in here. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm actually gonna type something. So I'm gonna do, oh, generating users, uh, like testimonial section where there is three testimonial cards per row and each user is saying something positive about our text to image AI products. So let's see how this actually is gonna do. So I'm gonna click on here. Uh, of course you need to have access. You can't actually use it right now because it's still in private beta, but it will be in like public beta a little soon. 
And of course, you need some you know credits in here to run different queries. As you see in here, every single time you run a query, you get like a minus 30 credits. And here, as you see, like it, it kind of like generates everything super quickly. So it doesn't take very long. It took around 15 seconds or something. And the awesome part about this one it actually gives you three choices to choose from. So the first time it's gonna generate like three different designs for you. So like there is a design in here, uh, there is the B one, and there is the C. And of course you can actually toggle and switch between all of those. And they are a little different. So this one actually, for example, has a box shadow underneath in there. For example, for the other one, for like the B, it's more of like, it's not really centered. But I think what I love the most is actually the A one. It looks pretty good. It's pretty sick and it's pretty, pretty minimal. So I'm gonna go with the A1 in here and I'm actually gonna go ahead and try to tell it, like tell it something. Let's say for example here, I have the user that is actually posting the testimonial. So I have the name of the user, but what I want exactly is one like an avatar of the user. So I wanna see like a picture, a small picture of the user to increase the authenticity of the actual testimonial for, you know, for our users. So let's say I'm gonna do add user avatar image in here. I'm gonna say next to user name. So I'm going to hit enter in here and actually it's going to start the generation. So it's going to use A in here and it's going to incrementally add depending on what we prompted it. So it tries to add exactly what we told it. So let's hope it actually adds something cool. And there you go. So actually, as you can clearly see, I can see things actually going pretty well first in here because it added an image and I can see an image. But what I'm more of interested on, uh, yeah, it didn't actually gave us an actual image. But at least it actually knew that it actually wanted to add the image right here on the left side next to the full name of the actual user and he added it like in a rounded way. So everything is, is pretty sick so far. So I'm gonna try to tell it, can you add real images of uh, people to make it look better or something? Uh, okay, so I'm gonna hit enter in here and actually see, I hope I'm actually gonna go ahead and grab some images. Maybe some SVGs would be cool, but I would love to see some images. I'm not really sure if it's gonna actually be able to do that. Yeah, it doesn't actually, it's, it's not able to basically bring images, but if you actually go ahead and check the source code, the actual source code, and you scroll down a little bit and you're gonna notice the images in here. So it has an image and it has a placeholder. And for the image SRC, it's basically using like placeholder or SVG. So like whenever you go inside of that one, you can just like basically replace it with your own image URL or something. That's gonna work immediately. And it's gonna look absolutely amazing. Now the awesome feature that I already mentioned is actually the pick and edit. So you can click on it and it's actually gonna turn this into a more of like interactive canvas where you can select a specific element. So for example, I'm gonna select this, this uh, quote in here and I'm gonna tell it to make it smaller and add a little more. So make the text smaller and add a little more text. And I'm click, I'm going to click update and actually see how it does. So as you in here, it added a little more text. Like I, I think it I completely replaced everything. So as you see between version two in here and version three, added a little more text in here, which is pretty nice. But unfortunately, it wasn't able to maybe like decrease the size of the text. So I'm going to try to immediately tell it in here. So I'm going to say make quote text a little smaller. I'm going to click enter in here and see what it's going to do. Now we actually went through and actually made the text smaller, but it only made it smaller for the middle card, which is okay, I, what am I supposed to do with that? I have three cards in here, all of them should have the same text size. Now I think I'm a more of a big fan for the bigger text instead of a small text because it's a, like a little bit harder to read. So I think I like the bigger text compared to the small text. So I'm going to go back to version three. And the awesome part about this one is actually, you can go back to any version, and you can start typing on it, and it's going to actually build on top of that version. So if version five that's going to be generated right now is going to be going from version three instead of version four. So it's time for version three, I'm going to go and tell it to add three more rows of testimonial. And so I'm going to click enter in here and see what's going to do. Hopefully it's going to be able to go ahead and add three rows each under each other in here of, of course, user testimonial cards. And there you go. Now we have three rows of testimonial cards in here and they look absolutely amazing. One more thing I want to actually do to this is actually go ahead and add rating stars. So like right below where the name of the user is, I'm going to add like, uh, you know, five rating stars just to make it look a little better and more of like a testimonial sort of card. So add five rating stars at the bottom of each card. So I'm going to click enter in here. Hopefully it will go ahead and add SVG stars. So after a couple of tries in here, I tried to put them like an outline, a little 
bigger stars. So I tried to ask it for smaller ones, they made it smaller ones, but it couldn't actually make it like of a field instead of outlined. Also, it only generated one card for me instead of like the six cards I already had on the five. Anyway, so one last thing in here I wanna try is actually to make this a dark mode. Hopefully it doesn't ruin anything of. So let's go ahead and do make cards use dark mode. So click enter and let's hope it actually generates everything in dark mode. Awesome. Now in version 10 in here, I have three cards. All of them follow the dark mode really, really precisely. Plus they are three cards instead of just one card. So I'm really, really happy with what this one is actually able to do. Plus I'm pretty sure the code in here looks pretty sick with a lot of SVGs, a lot of complications. It's a little bit harder to read with the different polygons and you have everything inside of here. But of course, with just some, you know, a couple of minutes, you can just take this and split it up into a couple of components and you can easily work it and, and put it inside of your project. Now let's go ahead and actually try to copy this command in here, which is v0 add this particular, the ID of the component in here and try to add it into a Next.js project. So I have my Next.js project here. Of course, before you go and do anything because this one uses ChatCN. So you have to initialize ChatCN UI in here and how to know that you're gonna find components.json inside of your projects in here, your, your root projects. So if this one doesn't exist, you can just do mpx v0 and you do latest and you just do init. And this will actually go ahead and initialize v0 or shcn. That's basically the same thing. And it's gonna make your projects work with it. Now I can use mpx v0 and actually go ahead and add our projects. Now, instead of using mpx, I'm gonna use bunx because I'm using bun as a package manager for my projects. I'm gonna click enter in here and wait for it to go ahead and add it. Now, first question it asks, is what do you want to name the component? So I want to name the component like um, user reviews or something. I'm going to click, click enter and this will actually go ahead and generate user reviews inside of the components. And it's creating yeah, user reviews already in here for us. And there you go. So if you go inside of the file, we've got the full code in here. So I'm going to get back into my project. So I'm going to go to the up in here, page.tsx. I have another card in here, so I don't need this one. So I want to just go ahead and grab user reviews. Okay. And put that one in there. I want to save. And there you go. This is actually what we found. This is actually our cards in here working in React, like local host in here using Next.js. Of course, it's not 100% perfect. I can clearly notice that the rating stars in here are not like actual stars for some reason. So maybe there's something broken when I try to add the code. Maybe I should go ahead and actually try to copy paste the code instead of like, you know, installing it through this V0 CLI. Maybe, but most of the times, like 90% of the times, that's pretty good. It actually generated exactly what we told it to do. It uses dark mode in here. Everything is almost perfect. So thank you guys for watching. This has been V0. I tried just to go through with you in the private beta. Of course, it's still beta. There's a lot of fixes and bug fixes to go through, but I tried to go with you on the actual private beta, actually give you an idea of what it looks like to use an AI sort of model by Vercel to basically generate UIs for your React application and projects and how that actually feels. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and catch you hopefully in the next ones.